hello what's up in this tutorial i'm going to be showing you a very different way of using frequency separation in photoshop in order to retouch your images for those that don't understand frequency separation frequency separation is a skin retouching technique that is going to divide the image into two layers that is the high frequency layer and the low frequency layer in the pre previous tutorials i've been showing you how to use it using gaussian blur and this one i'm going to be showing you how to use median to apply the blurring on the skin texture and also retain it at the end of it also this is going to be a frequency separation tutorial focusing on median and not gaussian blur and maybe this can be beneficial and really helpful if at all you want to explore and try out a very new approach to frequency separation if at all you have been using gaussian blur as a technique under or within frequency separation so without further ado let's get started so i'm just going to come and I create two layers right here by pressing Ctrl Command J twice. And I'm going to rename this to low. And I'm going to rename this to high. So in the low frequency layer, we have our colors. And in the high frequency layer, we have our texture. So usually I've been coming and I turn this off. So this is what we're going to be doing right away. And we come to the low frequency layer. So instead of applying the Gaussian blur to the low frequency layer, you're going to be applying a very new approach to this so i'm just going to come to the low frequency layer i'm just going to come to filter and i'm just going to come to noise and i'm going to come to median so this is the difference so when it comes to this point you have to blur out the skin textures as usual so for my case i'll look for an area that seems to have more textures than the rest of the skin and you can see when you slightly move this it is going to be a little bit intense from the very start or from the word go so you have to be careful with the median approach but i find it a little bit better so i'm just going to come to the radius and simply left click and start dragging this up so you have to make sure it is blurring out the textures from the image so you stop at the point when the textures are just starting to disappear from the image but a good thing about this is as you're blurring out the textures within the skin it is just going to retain majority of the contouring or the outlines within the image unlike the gaussian blur technique or method so this is going to retain these outlines and you can see that the eyebrows are still intact but the only thing that is being affected majorly is our skin texture and this is what we want to apply so you can see that the radius is 11 or so this may be differing from your image because you may be having a varying level of skin textures within your photos or images but good thing about the median process or the median technique opposed to the gaussian blur is the outlines remain intact within the image so like i said move the radius up to a point when your textures are just starting to get lost from the image so 11 is fine and i'm just going to click on ok I'm just going to apply the median filter on top of my low frequency layer in order to retain only the colors. But as I've noticed that this low frequency layer is as well lacking texture. So you're just going to come to the high frequency and now activate it and click left click on the eye icon and simply come to image and I'm going to come down to our apply image as usual. So if at all you have 8-bit or 16-bit I've always explained this we are going to be following this very exact step that we have been using initially before so for my case I'm just going to come right here the source is the name of your image and the loaf the layer from which we are subtracting or, or even extracting our textures is going to be the low frequency layer the channel is RGB and if at all you're using an 8-bit image if that is not going to be checked then for an 8-bit image make sure the blend mode is subtract or pass at 100 percent preserve transparency and mask cannot check and also the scale is 20 offset 128 and you see the textures on the gray kind of layer but if at all you're using a 16-bit image so if at all you have 16 right here you select the low frequency layer, the channel rgb the blend mode is going to be add or pass at 100 percent the scale is 20 offset zero Preserve transparency and mask cannot check. And this time around for a 16-bit image, you turn on the invert option. And you'll have the textures on this gray kind of layer. And come and simply click on OK. 
So just come to the blend mode and change it from normal and change it all the way to linear light and you get back the image that it was meant to be. So after doing this, we're just going to ensure that we have correctly separated the frequencies of the image into the textures and the colors. So in order to approve that, just come and select both layers and press Ctrl or Command G on the keyboard to group this and you can name this to frequency separation. After doing this, you can turn this on and off. You can see that there is no difference between the original image and our separated image, meaning we have successfully separated the frequencies of the image. But this is not all because separating the frequencies basically enables us to divide the image into these two layers. But this is not all and it doesn't do the retouching for us. So it is, ju it is just more of a base for us to work on the two layers and fine-tune them so that we, when we combine both layers we end up with a nicely retouched image so we're just going to open up this group and we go ahead and straight and select a low frequency remember first of all we want to have uniform skin tone transitions within the image you can see that we have this random color and we have these color inconsistencies and while they're trying to transition from one color to another it is not very nice and gradual or even uniform so you just can come to the brushes and simply get the mixer brush tool. Right click and you get the mixer brush tool. I'm using Photoshop 2020 and if at all you're using an older or a later version, you may find your mixer brush tool under these tools down here. So you right click and you look for your mixer brush tool. So you have to set up the mixer brush tool to fine tune or work on the image better. So just come and first of all, you make sure that you left click and make sure the hardness is at 0%. And make sure you drop down and select clean brush and also select the option that says clean the brush after each and every stroke make sure it is selected because as you're working on the skin we want to be mixing colors that are going to be different and we don't want to drag color from one area to another so make sure the option that says clean the brush after each and every stroke is also selected the weight i'm going to be using is nine percent the load of 75 percent the mix at 90 and the flow of 100 percent also make sure sample all layers is not checked and when you're done setting this right you just come and turn off the high frequency layer because in this way we only want to deal with the colors within the image and we don't want to be distracted by the textures in the image so after doing this if i told you you're comfortable working with the texture layer turned on you can still leave it turned on but always make sure as you're turning on the texture layer you also select or you're still selected on the color layer or the low frequency layer so with the mr brush tool selected you can either decrease or increase on the size of the mr brush tool by using the open and close brackets on the keyboard then if at all the mr brush tool is showing a cross icon you can as well press the caps lock key to have it as a circle so if at all my mr brush tool is going to start displaying two circles let me just explain that because as you're retouching you may notice that my mr brush tool is going to be showing two circles so if I thought it is showing two circles and you're a little bit confused, it is as a result of my screen recorder that is going to highlight every single area I'm trying to work on so that you can follow along. So that is not much of a big deal. So how to use the missile brush tool, you simply left click and hold down and you drag the missile brush tool in the direction of the way a given area is shaped. So you have to keep your brush strokes as small as possible because you don't want to drag color from one area to another so you have to move the missile brush tool and you try to blend you can see that the forehead area is moving this kind of direction so i'll move the missile brush tool in an up down kind of movement or direction and this is going to enable me retain the original skin details within the image so you have to keep on reducing or increasing on the size of the missile brush tool by using the open and close brackets on the keyboard so I'm just going to be doing this. So you mix colors that are looking alike. And while they're transitioning, for example, from the highlight to the midtones, just come and mix that bordering area so that you can retain the original highlights. And as you're retouching, make sure you don't zoom all the way in because when you zoom all the way in, you won't be able to see the uneven skin tone transitions or the uneven skin color within the image. So make sure you are retouching at a distance. And this also helps you to save so, so much time while you're doing the retouching so just going to forward this because i don't i don't want this to be a pretty long tutorial 
and let me first of all show you before I forward this so just turn on the texture layer and you can say quick before and after and we have as well retained the original skin textures within the image so I'll be turning this off and I retouch the rest of the skin and I'll see you later on in this tutorial hello welcome back and now you can see i'm done retouching this for image using the mr brush tool and this is a quick before and after you can say before after before after we have still retained the original skin textures within the image and we have just worked on evening out the skin color or skin tones within this very image so anything that would love to do when retouching using frequency passion is cleaning up and removing the blemishes and in order to remove the blemishes we simply come and we select the high frequency layer or the layer that is containing the textures or the outlines of the image which is the high frequency layer and after doing that just come to the clone stamp tool i prefer to use the clone stamp tool because it is very flexible and enables me to manually copy and paste skin or clean skin over the blemish that i'm trying to eliminate from the image so i'm just going to come select it and make sure the hardness at zero percent the blend mode is normal opacity and the flat hundred percent and the sample has to be current layer because i only want to deal with the blemishes that are part of the currently selected layer which is the high frequency layer so i now zoom in by using ctrl or command plus on the keyboard and i'll start cleaning up or removing the skin imperfections or the blemishes from this very image so in order to do this i'm just going to come and zoom in and how to remove a blemish simply left click on a clean skin area that is close or next to the blemish but also make sure that the size of the clean or the size of the clone stamp tool is slightly bigger than the blemish that you want to eliminate and in order to copy clean skin hold down the option or alternate key on the keyboard option and left click on that clean area or alternate and left click on that clean area and simply left click over the blemish to eliminate it so that is how to use the clone stamp tool to clean up or remove blemishes from the skin area so let me repeat this once again you come to a clean area that or an area that has clean skin that is near the blemish that you want to eliminate make sure that the clone stamp tool is slightly bigger than the blemish that you want to remove and you can use the bracket keys to reduce or increase on the size of the clone stamp tool and how to eliminate it simply copy that clean skin by holding down alternate if at all using windows and you left click to copy clean skin near the blemish and if at all using mac you hold down the option key and left click to copy clean skin and simply left click over the blemish to eliminate it so i'm just going to be removing the blemishes and i'll see you later on in this first tutorial hello and now you can see i'm done removing the blemishes or skin imperfections that were part of this image and you can see quick before and after before after before after i've removed majority of the blemishes from this very image so i'll just do a little bit of cleaning up right in this area and try to remove these tiny blemishes remaining so i'm done removing the blemishes from this very image and the next thing i want to do is to show you how to remove all clean or whiten eyes and teeth in photoshop so this is a before and after so far so just come to the adjustments and come and create a hue and saturation adjustment layer and come to the saturation make sure you selected it under master come to saturation and simply desaturate the image up to when you feel like uh, the eyes are just getting a little whiter and make sure the white layer mask is selected and simply press ctrl i or command i on the keyboard 
and that is going to invert the effect and come to the brushes right click and get the brush tool and measure for your settings that is at zero blend mode is normal past at 100 percent and the flat 100 percent make sure you have black and red by resetting and clicking on these two small boxes so you can switch between black and red by using x on the keyboard so make sure white is the foreground color and remember in photoshop white is going to reveal and black is going to hide so i'm just going to paint using a white brush to reveal the whitening effect around or in the eye area so i'm just going to paint in those areas and that is going to automatically and naturally whiten the eyes for me in this case i'm just going to whiten the eyes just like that so i can come and do the painting also in the teeth to do a little bit of teeth whitening so you just just paint on the teeth to do a little bit of the teeth whitening in this case and you can say this does oh it gets the job done so right now we are done doing the skin retouching and doing the eye and teeth whitening and we want to save the image after retouching it. So in order to save the image, you're just going to come simply to file, export and come to export as. Then after doing this, you're just going to have the export as window open for us within Photoshop. And your image is going to automatically display after loading in this preview window that is loading right here. Make sure the format is JPEG, quite at 100%. Image size, don't tamper with this. I prefer scale of 100%. And resample, I prefer a resample of by cubic sharper because I want the image to be slightly sharper when I try saving it. And after doing that, just come to the color space and convert it to sRGB and also embed color profile. Make sure you tick these two, op two options. Because we don't want the photo to change in color when we post it or print it out. So make sure you embed the color profile and also convert to sRGB and simply click on export. And the image is going to be saved wherever you want it to be saved. So this is it for this tutorial. And if I told you have learned the median approach to frequency separation, this is it for today. And I'll see you in yet more behind the scenes and I'll be focusing more on behind the scenes and less tutorials in future. And I'll see you in yet more tutorials. And don't forget to keep practicing and also keep creating.